Hey guys, it's Jamie. And I'm Amanda. We're from Siouxland Libraries, where today we're doing a virtual Kids Discover. So if you've never seen one of these before, it's where we do hands-on experiments and activities to help you discover the world around you. And if you really like science and other videos, go to our YouTube channel, Siouxland Libraries, to see all these past videos we've done. Absolutely. So we're doing science. It's pumpkin season, fall, my yes. favorite time of year. Yep. So I was thinking we do two of my favorite classic science experiments but with a pumpkin flavor. I'm excited. All right, so first off, I love slime. Yes, who doesn't? So maybe we make pumpkin slime. Oh, I'm excited. And then next, I think we should see what happens when you put elephant toothpaste inside of a jack-o'-lantern. And I've got one right here in mind. Oh, that one looks great. So let's grab some tools and let's get started. Awesome. Okay, so let's start with pumpkin slime. Yes, I'm excited. Perfect. So we're gonna learn about polymers Ooh. through these experiments, okay? Okay. So we're going to start with our glue. Okay. I need a cup of that, if you don't mind pouring that in yeah. this bowl for me. So we're mixing the glue in the water first. And this is clear glue That's today, right? That's clear liquid glue, for okay. sure. We need it to be clear because it makes the pumpkin guts kind of show up a little bit better. Oh, sure, that makes sense. All right. And the other thing you're gonna need is some liquid starch and, of course, a pumpkin. Of course, of course. So clear liquid glue is a polymer and it's a polymer because it's made of repeated molecules that have strung and bond together, right? Almost like long chains, right? Yes, exactly. Okay. That's a perfect way to think of a polymer is a long chain of molecules, just Nice. All right, so let's do a cup of water as well. Cup of water. And we're gonna mix that up. Now in the interim, you will also need to cut a top off of your pumpkin, because we're gonna actually mix this slime up right inside of here, which is gonna be really cool. Definitely feels pretty weird. All right, so when she's doing that, we might as well go ahead and just open this pumpkin up. We're gonna take a look inside. I, like I said, I've cut that off. You might ask uh, adults help with that, but look at all those guts inside this one. It's got quite a bit, so what we need to do is loosen some of that up. Okay. And we're going to take a turn on that. Nice. Do you need this tool by chance? I will grab that and I will also use some of these spoons to kind of get that stuff torn away from the side. <laughs> Scooping out the pumpkin. All right, so we've got the top off. Okay. All right, we pulled all these guts away from the side, uh, but we're gonna keep them inside here. And now I need half a cup of liquid starch, if okay. you don't mind. Yeah, of course. And we're gonna put that actually right in the pumpkin. Okay. So go ahead and pour it in, perfect. Smart to hold it over in case we spill. So half a cup. And... Half a cup right inside our pumpkin. Okay. Perfect. And I'm gonna use a spoon first to just kind of stir that around. We wanna get that mixed in a little bit. Yeah. All right. So we've got our water and our glue mix ready. Yep. I think if you want to take a peek, I think we might be ready to go in. What do you think? Oh, it looks awesome. All right. Go ahead and let's pour that in there. Okay. You ready? Yeah. We'll take a look. All right, here we go. Ooh. <laughs> All right, that's so awesome. Okay, I'll use the spoon just a little bit more and now it's just about mixing. Yeah, I feel like you should use your hands almost. I will. I just want to get the first bits stirred. Okay. And then actually, Jamie is right. It is good to knead that slime and kind of those mix pumpkin mixes together. So you talked about when we were mixing earlier that like the glue was a polymer and then we added water and starch. That's right. Or liquid starch. So then when the glue mixes with like the water and the liquid starch, does something else happen? Oh, absolutely, thank you. Uh, so what we wanna do is actually create a larger polymer. Okay. That's essentially what slime is, is we're connecting those bonds just like you would with glue, but it kind of makes them a little stiffer and we're kind of creating a different substance. Okay. So we are bonding all those items together. Nice. And I gotta tell you, this feels crazy. I, I can't wait to feel it when you're all done.
All right, so you might find when you're working with your pumpkin slime that you need to add some more glue or some more starch. Um, we've definitely taken some time and we've added some stuff. And so those ratios that we had for you with one cup of water, one cup of glue and half a cup of starch, you certainly can feel free to kind of use those and make more if you want. Maybe you want to make four cups of you know, uh, glue and water and two cups of starch. And you can just kind of put in as much as you need to. And you'll start feeling it. it's like really firming up now. And Jamie, if you want to yeah. get me one of those clear containers over there. Of course. Perfect. So I think we've got this mixed up pretty darn good. I should ask, do you want to feel this before I pull this out of the pumpkin? I kind of do. Okay. It yeah. looks too good to pass up. All right, go ahead and set that down and you can go Is ahead. Is that right here? Yeah. Go ahead, feel it, see what it's... Oh, <laughs> oh my goodness. Just like the best. It's perfect, right? Like it feels so interesting. You can still feel the pumpkin guts inside there. You can feel the seeds as well. And really now you can see that bonding process, right? Like all yeah. of those materials, you can like visualize that chain of kind molecules of coming together. How they're holding together and... Right, Oh, super so fun cool. substance. So if you want, you can of course keep your slime inside your pumpkin or you can take it and put it inside a container if you want to play with sure. it later. Yeah. So that way we can kind of see what it looks like. Go ahead, <laughs> just pull it in there, yeah. Oh my goodness, this is so cool. Perfect. And so if you're looking to kind of firm it up, the liquid starch is the, you know, agent that's going to make that kind of more of a slime substance. Right, it's so, going to thicken it up a little bit, stretch it out. It's going to thicken it up, yep. So if you want to make it thicker, you just add some of that. I love this. This is so cool. It's so and like cool. like you mentioned, every pumpkin is a different size, so you might need to play around with the ratio a little bit right. while you're mixing. Each one has different seeds, different moisture level. That certainly will change things. So feel free. You, you really can't mess this experiment up, and it's all about what kind of slime you want to make. So nice. this is what we've got. And I think this is maybe one of my favorite science experiments we've ever done. <laughs> well, I suppose we get this cleaned up and maybe do some elephant toothpaste. Let's do it. All right, perfect. So thank you so much for showing us that slime. That was so cool and such a cool twist doing it inside of a pumpkin. I know, it's awesome. Keeping the pumpkin guts and the seeds inside there just yes. makes a really cool texture in your hands. I loved so. it. But elephant toothpaste inside a jack-o'-lantern, I cannot wait to see how this works. Yes, so hopefully it works out well, but we've got um, a jack-o'-lantern here that you carved for us. It looks mm -hmm. beautiful, thank you. You're welcome. Um, and what we're gonna do for this experiment is a chemical reaction inside the jack-o'-lantern. Did you say chemical reaction? Chemical reaction. Oh. It's like my favorite thing in science. I know. So for this experiment, we're gonna need a small little cup that can fit inside of our carved pumpkin. Okay. And then we're gonna need a larger cup, which I've got right here. Perfect. Um, and then some things like warm water. We need some active dry yeast, okay. some dish soap, and then hydrogen peroxide. Okay. Hydrogen peroxide is a little, um, I don't think scary is the right word, but make sure that you get an adult to supervise and kind of help you out with the experiment because right. whenever we're handling chemicals, it. right, we want to be careful. Okay. Don't touch it. It's just for our experiment. Perfect. So to start us off then, we're going to take our little cup. Okay. And would you be willing to help measure some hydrogen peroxide into yep. it? Absolutely. Perfect. So All right. There's that. And if you want to put, let's do uh, two tablespoons okay. in this cup here. Two tablespoons. Perfect. Excellent. All right, and what's next? We're gonna put some dish soap in there. There's no exact measurement of it, just give it a good squirt. Okay. Inside. That looks perfect. All right, excellent. And then we're gonna do some food coloring to make our experiment have a little bit more color. Green. Green's my favorite color, and I thought it would uh, be different from the orange on our pumpkin, so. Really good Halloween colors. Yes. So we're just gonna okay. stir that up a little bit. All right. 
And then once we get that all stirred up, I'm gonna open up our pumpkin here. Oh. Yes. And we're gonna put that inside very carefully. All right, does that look good? That looks perfect. Thank you. Excellent. So we're just gonna put him in there. You wanna make sure he's on a nice flat level spot so that he doesn't tip over. Okay. Looks good. So then now we're gonna do a little bit more with that extra hydrogen peroxide there. Okay, um, just leave it to the side. Well, I'm gonna add some things to it or have you add some things. Oh. Yeah, we're gonna add a little bit more dish soap to the our remaining hydrogen peroxide right. because this is gonna be a good starting point for us, but we might need a little bit more later. Is this good amount? That looks perfect. A little bit more? You want more? Let's yeah. do more. Okay. <laughs> And then we're going to add some food coloring again. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Let's get some more color. Stir it up. And stir it up. And that looks like it's probably like a quarter cup of hydrogen peroxide. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't matter. It's just some stuff we're going to have on the side left over in case we need, need a little bit more towards the end of our experiment. Excellent. So I'll take that perfect. and I'm going to put it over here so it's out of the way. Okay. Thank you. So now we're going to mix up our warm water mm -hmm. and our yeast. So okay. for that, We've got a cup here. Yep. And we need four tablespoons of warm water. All right. Yeah, it does feel warm. Yeah. Thanks for helping me mix everything. Yeah, no problem. All right. So we're going for, and then we're putting the yeast inside of here. Yeah. So That's now we're going to open up that yeast packet. Okay. And you'll need a pair of scissors to do that. Just a little active dry yeast packet. Just a little like active this. dry yeast like you would use for baking. Okay. And then we're going to pour that in there. Whole thing? whole packet and then we're going to give it a good stir right. um, and you want to make sure that you're stirring the whole um, dry pack the yeast in there so it's mixed up it's going to try and clump together a little bit just keep stirring it and yeah. try and help break it down in that warm water it feels kind of tough yeah and that's why it's nice to have a taller glass here because that way you don't accidentally spill anything out yeah it's definitely splashing around yes <laughs> So while you're stirring up that yeast and the water, what we're doing is we're creating our catalyst. And okay. a catalyst in chemistry and in science world is just something that's gonna help speed up your chemical reaction. Okay. So this yeast, once we add it to our hydrogen peroxide, it's just gonna help break down those hydrogen peroxide bonds much faster than they would normally. Right, and so a catalyst that we can, is always in a chemical reaction? It's not always in a chemical reaction, but it can be. Okay. And it just helps things move faster and react faster, which we want with this one, because we want a nice wow factor. Okay. I think we're gonna take a look. I feel like we've got it mixed up pretty good. I think it looks perfect. All right, so what do we do with this? Okay, so now we've got this, and what we're gonna do is I'm gonna pour it in Mm -hmm. And then would you be willing to put the top on when I'm done? Yeah, absolutely. And we're going to see what happens initially. Okay. Well, actually, I'll have you hold on. I'll have you add it when I'm ready. Okay. You so, just let me know when. Yes. Yeah, so what we're going to do is first we're going to add this to our small little cup inside. And then remember that little guy we mixed up earlier? We're, we had him off to the side. We're going to pull him back over. And if we need to help kind of get the reaction going a little bit, we'll add a little bit more. Okay. Are you ready? I am totally ready to see what's about to happen. Okay. So we're going to add this. Whoa! And then, okay, you want to add the top? Okay. Whoa! Ah, <laughs> yes. That turned out so good. It worked. Oh wow! Yes. So Goodness. you can see our that kind of green, light green foam is coming yeah. out of the front of our jack o' lantern. So what happened is, as that chemical reaction was happening, it was releasing gas, oh, and okay. that gas then got trapped inside little bubbles that our soap made. That's why you put the soap in That's there. That's why we okay. had the soap. And it just helped create this cool foam. Um, it's I, so neat. I love it. Like, yes. the color looks amazing. Yes. Our pumpkin looks amazing. <laughs> it looks so cool. <laughs> and another fun thing is this experiment, if you put your hand close to it, Amanda, don't touch it, but just put close. Do is you feel that, anything? Is that warm? It's warm. So not only did we make a chemical reaction, but it's an exothermic reaction. I was going to say it. At yeah, that is nuts. I can really feel like the heat coming yeah, out of there. Yeah, so exothermic just means that heat is exiting the reaction. It's exiting and giving off heat. Exothermic. Exiting. Exit. That yes. is so cool. That's how I helped learn it in school. Um, I think I'm going to do every jack-o'-lantern with a little elephant toothpaste from I now I think on. you should. It's super fun. Yes. Thanks so much for joining us. The pumpkin experiments have been so much fun. So good. And if you like these experiments and want to see more, we have a bunch of videos that we've done on our Siouxland Library's YouTube page. Definitely check those out and look for new ones to come as well. Yes. 
And the best part about working in a library is we've got all sorts of books on science in different topics like this. Yes. So a couple I pulled out to show you guys are oh, ick. <laughs> so this is just a book full of science experiments that's going to kind of um, help all of your senses kind of be involved in the experiment. So this is a really fun one. Very cool. Another one I brought out was mason jar science. So this is a cool one where you can do tons of different science experiments inside of a mason jar with things you can find at home. So it's really cool. That's awesome. Yeah. So one of my favorite books that we have right now is called Little Book of Slime. And it's all about how slime is actually naturally occurring in the wild. That's how different cool. animals produce slime and what they use it for. Yeah. So really interesting take. And of course, as Jamie said, if you want some, some simple just how to make slime recipes, we've got a lot of slime books here. So thank you so much for joining us, you guys. And we'll see you next time. Bye. See ya.